Senate Democrats and House Republicans on Tuesday outlined vastly divergent approaches to shoring up the government's finances. A reminder of how far apart they remain on fiscal policy even as both sides insist publicly that a bipartisan compromise is possible. As part of the effort to find common ground, President Obama made the rare appearance at a gathering of Democratic senators, his first of four meetings with lawmakers on Capitol Hill this week, to explore ways that the two parties could overcome differences that have deadlocked the budget process for much of the last five years. But in many ways, the two parties seem to be working in parallel universes. House Republicans, led by Rep. Paul DeRyan of Wisconsin, presented a tax and spending plan that relies on many of the same policies that became lightning rods for critics during the 2012 presidential campaign, when Mr. Ryan was the party's vice presidential nominee. At the White House, the senior administration official said that the Republican budget demonstrated how complicated negotiations would be. The Republican plan sets out to balance the budget in a decade and would cut spending by $4.6 trillion through 2023 in large part by rolling back many of Mr. Obama's signature legislative accomplishments. It would repeal the health care overhaul of 2009, eliminate the subsidized insurance exchanges and Medicaid expansion that make up the core of the law, and turn Medicare into a system of private insurance plans financed by federal vouchers. Republicans would also do away with Wall Street regulatory laws that Mr. Obama championed and cancel the financing his administration sought for a high-speed rail network. Senate Democrats, meanwhile, were pressing forward with a budget they planned to start moving through the committee process on Wednesday. Before they could proceed, they had to set aside differences among themselves over how much to change costly but cherish federal benefit programs. When Mr. Obama met with them on Tuesday, several voiced concerns about cuts to Social Security and Medicare. The Democrats' budget plan will not call for adjusting the way inflation is calculated as a way to lower the future cost of those benefits, though Mr. Obama has said such a change should be on the table in talks with Republicans. In stark contrast to the austerity measures and dismantling of top Obama administration priorities that are at the center of the Republican plan, the Democrats' budget would create new government initiatives, expand others and seek to generate more tax revenue. Their proposal calls for a new $100 billion economic stimulus initiative for job training and repair to roads and bridges, projects that Democrats say they would pay for by closing loopholes in the tax code that benefit large corporations and wealthy individuals. All told, Democrats believe they can save nearly $1 trillion through such tax changes. They would save an additional $1 trillion by training spending, with a quarter of those cuts coming from the Pentagon. But as lawmakers on Tuesday began their budget deliberations for the fiscal year that starts October 1st, the stopgap measure to finance the government until then ran into trouble in the Senate as Tom Coburn of Oklahoma and John McCain of Arizona, both Republicans, raised objections, saying it included wasteful pork barrel spending. Democrats immediately seized on Mr. Ryan's budget as a sign that the Republican Party had failed to heed the lessons of the 2012 elections which denied Mr. Ryan and Romney the presidency and cut the Republican ranks in both houses of Congress. Senior administration officials said the Ryan budget underscored the hurdles the White House would confront if it hoped to reach an overarching budget deal with House Republicans. If Republicans demonstrate that absolutism in negotiations, the senior official said, there is no chance for an agreement. This budget reflects the same skewed priorities the Republican Party has championed for years. The same skewed priorities Americans rejected in November, Senator Harry Reid, the majority leader, said in remarks on the Senate floor on Tuesday. We've seen this show before. But Mr. Ryan said the election results would not intimidate Republicans into backing down. The election didn't go our way, believe me I, I know what the feels like. Mr. Ryan said at a news conference during which he was asked repeatedly why his party was doubling down on proposals that the American people appeared to have rejected in November. That means we surrender our principles. That means we stop believing in what we believe in. He said, continuing, we think we owe the country a balanced budget. We think we owe the country solutions to the big problems that are plaguing our nation, the debt crisis on the horizon, the slow-growing economy people trapped in poverty. We're showing our answers.